So, hi guys! Lubeltran here, the IT veteran. And in today's video, pag-uusapan natin bakit nga ba laging na-associate ang programming sa pagiging isang IT. So, let's get started. So, ang common misconception sa mga nagtitake ng IT profession kay, or, or mga regular na tao, okay? is kailangang magaling ka daw sa programming para maging isang IT. In reality, this is not true. Okay? Hindi lang naman kasi programming at saka software development ang track ng IT na pwede mong kunin. Okay? Marami pa tayong tracks and I'll discuss yung mga different tracks na yon in a future video. Pero really, the, the, the reason bakit ganito na ang, ang, mis ang conception okay, ng mga tao sa pagiging isang IT is it's really because of doon sa mga schools, colleges, and universities na nagtuturo ng IT uh, courses. Okay? Or yung uh, bachelor's degrees. Okay? Um, the reason for this one um, is that yung mga curriculum ng mga schools na to, or majority ng mga colleges and universities, yung curriculum ng IT nila is more geared into the software side of things. Wala siya masyadong uh, hardware. May, may mga konti naman, pero hindi ganun in-depth yung mga hardware courses na ino-offer nila doon sa, ano na bang tawag sa college ito? Yung curriculum, okay? That they are offering to their students. Now, bakit ganito? Why is the reason um, kukunti lang yung mga hardware subjects sa tinuturo nila? Um, number one is that madali lang kasing magturo ng software. All you need is a computer, a laptop, a programming uh, application, and that's it. Or coding application, and that's it. Yun lang ang base, basic need mo okay, to start um, learning computer programming. Pero when you shift into the hardware side of things, okay, medyo nahihirapan yung mga schools okay, to uh, teach those uh, subjects. Yung katulad na Cisco, um, Microsoft, uh, ano pa, um, and other hardware uh, known companies and brands. Now, bakit ganito? Kasi yung barrier of entry ng mga schools to teach these courses okay, or these technologies is napakataas in terms of budget okay, or cost. Okay? Now, bakit ganon? Bakit mataas? Kasi hindi biro rin um, for the school to suddenly invest in a single technology or a, a, a couple of technologies on the hardware side of things. Um, kung mapapansin ninyo sa mga computer lab ninyo sa college, um, maraming computers. Okay? Pero hindi, kung mapapansin ninyo, some schools, yung mga computers na gamit nila, hindi branded. Okay? Um, in order lang nila sa computer shop or um, computer provider. Um, some schools naman, they have branded like Dell, uh, uh, Lenovo, um, HP, and others. Okay? Pero yung price difference kasi, uh, in terms of PCs, okay? so you can you can buy a regular PC for a, a budget of around twenty five to thirty thousand pesos. But if you buy a branded computer like for, coming from Dell or HP, they can cost from around thirty five uh, to forty five thousand pesos. Okay? Depending on specs. Ganon din sa ibang technologies in terms of uh, hardware. Um, kunyari, Cisco equipments, okay? um, computer networking. Hindi yan masya um, Tinuturo siya on some other schools. Pero for you for the school to be able to teach it hands-on, hindi biro. Kasi yung, yung, yung routers na kailangan nilang bilihin, yung hardware, the switches, um, ang average cost ng isang router is around 50,000 pesos. Uh, a switch with uh, regular switching capabilities is can range from uh, 50,000 to 100,000 each. Okay. Ganon din sa servers. Okay. Yung mga servers na ginagamit sa IT industry talaga can cost or can cost uh, to as much as around 300 to 1 million pesos each. Ganon din yung mga high-end uh, Cisco equipments and high-end desktop equipments na ginagamit. So, for a regular school or college to invest in a large 
uh, purchase like that is very risky on their side. Bakit? Ang tagal nilang ang tagal nilang kukunin yung investment nila. Okay? Yung yung investment nila pabalik on those set types of equipment. And hindi rin naman kasi ganon kataas okay? yung uh, budget nila in terms of IT. And there's also a common misconception din kasi on on the side of the colleges and universities. Um, ang ang nagiging problema din kasi nila is that once walang wala masyadong nagtuturo okay, nung mga technologies na ganito. Okay? Someone who has been in the IT industry that has already touched all of those hardware equipments and wants to teach back okay, into the academe okay, is um, very difficult to find. A person like that is very difficult to find. Okay? Kasi kung nasa IT industry ka na, kung, kung IT professional ka na at nagtatrabaho ka na, okay, ang taas ng sweldo mo doon. Eh. Pero if you're going to switch into the academic field, okay, hindi ganong kataas yung sweldo. Eh. Okay? There's, a, uh, uh, there's a disparity on in terms of the salary. Okay? Kaya mapapansin ninyo, um, halos wala masyadong bumabalik into the academy pagka-graduate ng isang uh, IT student. Okay? Kasi, um, ayun nga, um, in terms of the pay grade or salary grade, hindi rin ganon ka laki. Okay? So, ayun. Um, but, ang tip ko sa mga colleges and schools and universities is that uh, times are changing uh, right now. You can actually teach um, very complex technologies and very complex um, hardware equipments without buying... Um, the expensive hardware requirements. Um, may technology tayo kasing uh, tinatawag na virtualization where you can actually virtualize um, physical equipments into uh, applications that you can use but they will still work the same way. Okay? Then, meron din naman tayong uh, advent ng cloud computing which makes yung entry barrier um, of learning complex IT technologies in terms of hardware and software much more cheaper than buying the actual expensive equipment. Okay. So that's it, fellow IT engineers, um, for this video. Hopefully, may natutunan kayo. And um, really, hindi lang uh, programming okay, ang ginagawa ng isang IT. Marami rin tayong ibang fields na pwedeng i-explore. Me, myself, ako... I'm not good at programming. I mean, ko na sa inyo yan. And you have seen me um, talk about this in uh, past videos of mine. Um, hindi ako maka-software. Uh, maka-hardware type person ako. Okay? So, mahilig ako magbuting-ting ng mga gamit and technologies. Now, yung mga, mga hinahawa ko technologies ngayon and uh, IT equipments are in the range of uh, millions of dollars, hindi lang peso. Okay? But... Ang goal ko is, is to share um, through this video series yung mga um, uh, knowledge kong yun. Okay? So, make sure you subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel here. And if you're watching this via Facebook, uh, make sure you like my page and follow me there um, for more videos like this about the IT industry and IT careers. And uh, make sure you visit also my website, lubeltran.com, the IT veteran. So I'm going to be putting the link here so that you can grab my free ebook that I'm going to be posting here. It's called um, Tips and Tricks uh, uh, for Interviews and Salary Negotiations for IT Professionals. Okay? So yung ebook na to is primarily designed um, for um, you guys, um, IT professionals who are going to be uh, going into interviews and um trying to um, demystify yung interview process. Ano mga ba nangyayari sa IT sa interview process? Ano nga ba yung mga questions na tinatanong sa inyo usually? Nilagay ko yun sa ebook ko. And towards the last part of that ebook, doon ko rin ituturo paano ba mag-salary negotiation. Okay? Once na ikaw na yung final candidate for the job, tapos in binigay sa iyo yung sweldo mo, how can, paano ka hihilit pa? Okay, ng konti. Para mapataas yung sweldo mo. Kasi sayang naman yung uh, konting increase na yun eh. And minsan din kasi sa, alam nyo naman, uh, may tendency na pwede tayong baratin sa ating mga sweldo as an IT profession. Okay? So, that's it, fellow IT engineers, and I'll see you in the next video.